we are on a mission to try and become a single figure handicapper by the end of the summer. August 31st is the deadline for us to get down to the magic single digit number. We're gonna play three holes here at the Hertfordshire and I'm gonna walk you through where we're at right now, where we're planning to go and how we're planning to get there. Starting off here on hole 13, it's a 406 yard par four and it's really tricky. I think that'll do. Might catch the bunker at the bottom of the hill. Oh, blooming heck. All right, we'll find it. Now this is actually our second attempt at getting down single figure handicap on this channel. Unfortunately, I got injured, got tennis elbow, was out for four months, didn't manage to complete the challenge. We're now coming into the new golfing season, so it seems like the right time to pick it back up and see if we can get there. Our handicap is currently sitting at 14.2, but I've only handed in like three cards. Since I got injured, I'm playing probably more like an 18, 19 handicap. I have a look at some of my recent rounds. You can see that I'm roughly 18, 19 over par in those rounds. So that's probably where we at, but I haven't submitted any cards. So the handicap is not reflecting that right now. Narrowly avoided the bunker here. Haven't got a bad lie, about 180 in to this uphill flag. Got a five iron. Gonna go for it because I would love to get around these three holes in one over par. However, there's a very good chance that I could go like five or six over because this section of the course is a real scorecard ruiner. Anyway, let's see what we can do here. Oh, it's a bit left. Pulled it a bit. It's managed to get through the trees. We should have a simple chip on from there. Now, why do I want to get single figure handicap? Well, there are three reasons. Number one, I would like to be better at golf. Number two, I've made a stupid bet with one of my mates, Ben, that whoever has the higher handicap at the end of the year loses and will buy his opponent a blooming putter and a putter fitting to go with it. So money's on the line. And three, the reason I'm putting it on YouTube is because I want to be held accountable. Last time out, I saw incredible improvements in such a short amount of time. And that was because I had to stick to what I had said I was going to do. Oh, that hill's a killer. 20 yard shot here. I mean, the distance was almost perfect, but that line was horrific. Oh yeah, and there's another reason, because I'm part of the Absolute Bandits with Oaklefish, and I need to be good at golf to actually make the content enjoyable for you guys. This would be a great par if we made this one. Oh, that was so close! I don't think it was the best of rolls. I kind of babied it, but we'll take a bogey on that hole. Talking about the Absolute Bandits, a big development since last time is that we actually got sponsored by Puma and Cobra. So big shout out to them because they are now in turn sponsoring this channel too. And so to give you a quick rundown of the bag, we've got the Aerojet line of Driver, Three Wood and Hybrid. And then we have the Cobra Forge Tech X irons that go all the way from Gap to Five Iron. We have the Cobra King Utility 4 Driving Iron and we have the Cobra snake bite wedges in a 54 and 58. And then we have the Sport 45 blade putter, which is absolutely delightful. And so on screen now, you can see the distances that I'm hitting all of these clubs on average because our clubs are fitted with Arcos, which is going to give us a lot of statistics like I suck at approach, putting and driving currently. Chipping is the only area where I'm really excelling. What a blooming view that is. This is the 14th hole. It's a long dog leg to the right, par four, and it's got a pond down in the bottom right. Now, I don't think the pond is actually in play because today I'm playing from the white tee boxes, which is the first time I've ever done that. Usually I play from the yellows because I just get more enjoyment out of not having to stress over using long irons in to every single green. But I had a driving lesson this morning, and so I've gone back to the white tee boxes to force myself to hit driver on every hole to try and increase my confidence with it. Now, it was working really well on the range, You've already seen it spinny right on the first hole. That's what I'm trying to get away from. So let's see if we can manage it. Oh, okay, we've got to hope it's full short of the pond because that is headed straight for it. I did not see a splash, but I did not see it down. So fingers crossed. And that's exactly what I was talking about when I said these three holes can be blow up holes because there is so much danger on them. <laughs> so what other metric are we going to use to hold myself accountable? Well, a basic one, we're going to use weight because I'd like to get down a little bit to the weight I was at university when I was in my best shape, uh, which was about 81, 82 kg. Currently, I jumped on the scales this morning and we are... 86.2. Which isn't actually too bad considering I was about 94 kg at the start of the year and for someone who is 5'10 that does put them in 
well, the overweight category in the BMI scale. We have found our ball, bit of a tricky shot because there is a large tree between us and the uphill green. Haven't got the worst line in the world. We're about 190 uphill to this pin. So I'm gonna take hybrid and hopefully this is gonna come out nice and high and get up over that tree. Get over. Oh, that is, I think that's gonna be long. Okay, yeah, that is very, yeah. Okay, I took hybrid because I didn't, yeah, it wasn't, I think I might have overdone it. Why else do I need to hold myself accountable? Well, this is the big one. Recently, I've been getting some pain in my scapula, which is the point just behind your shoulder blade. So when I'm sitting down at my desk for a long period of time, it starts getting worse and worse and worse to the point where I can't actually sit down anymore. So we've been to the physio and he says that a lot of my problems come down to posture. Not only that, but if I don't sort it out now, there's a good chance that I'll be developing some really bad lower back problems in later life. And so I don't want that because that sounds awful. So we're gonna try and do as much as we can to correct our posture. I've got a posture support and I've got exercises to be getting on with. So I'll be doing those. So I'll report back to you on how that's going because I'll have lots of follow-up uh, sessions at the physio. Not only that, but I'm going to be doing a flexibility test to see if I get more flexible because we're going to be doing Pilates and yoga throughout this. And not only that, but we're going to be doing a lot of strength work as well. We're going to be hitting the gym. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff on our core, our legs, our back, obviously, our shoulders, biceps, you know, might as well keep the wife happy. And I'll keep you all updated on those as well. Now, I know it's been stopped by the rough, but we're pretty much pin high. I'm actually really happy about that. This is a tricky shot though, because it all runs away from me. So I kind of need to land the ball somewhere here and it will start trickling that way. Oh, it was almost perfect. I needed to get another three, four foot and it would have been so close. This would be an absolutely massive hole to get a par on, you know. Go, 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 go. Oh, I've under, I've babied it again. Two putts in a row, babied. We'll take a bogey though. Now you might be thinking Tom's got away with it here, he's onto a par three, but I haven't because this is one of the most scary par threes you could ever find. Like it's 157 yards off the whites here, downhill over a pond to a, I'd say like 50% peninsula green. It's, it's a worrying one. I've never played this hole off this tee box either. So nervous doesn't even come close. It says to take a nine iron on Arcos. Oh, I don't want to come up short though. I'm gonna go for the nine. No fear, just hit it. Oh, that is so thin, but it might work. Oh my God, get lucky. Oh my God, it's plugged into the bank at the front of the green. It's literally just gone straight in and sat there. That was mighty lucky. So how often can you expect to get updates on this? Well, along with the full course vlogs where I submit a handicap card in that I'll be running anyway, which are kind of like updates for the series because you'll see my handicap going up and down, etc. I'll check in with you about once a month, let's say round about the middle of the month, just to give you an update on my progress and play another three holes with you. Is it just me or does anyone else have like a thing about water? I just love it. I just love, oh look, there's a fish right here coming at me. Oh. Don't know if you saw that, ripples coming out. He's gone into the reflective light, so I doubt you can see him, but big, what looks like mirror or ghost carp right there. I told you it was plugged, look at that. Now, pretty sure the ruling is that if it's plugged, you get to pull it out, especially since it's lift clean and place at the moment. Now, we need to make this to get our one over. I think that's highly unlikely. More likely we're gonna make a bogey from this position because we've got no green to work with. We have to kind of bump it into this slope in front of me here. Oh my God, he's bladed it. I love being a mid handicapper. That's a good roll. Oh, okay, I'm happy with that. As long as I sink this one, I'll be happy. There we go. Right, it's three over. It's not the six over it could have been, but equally it's not the one over we've wanted. But bogey goal through this section of the course is more than fine with me. Hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you want to see another one, then just click right here.